Today I've decided to talk to you about travel anxiety tips. Um, I still suffer with a lot of travel anxiety. That's where a lot of my anxiety stems from now. Um, I find it so difficult to be in any kind of transportation, whether it's a car, a bus, a plane, a train, a boat, anything. It re I really struggle with it. I really struggle with being far away from home and just being in a really trapped, horrible, enclosed space where people are likely to be ill and I just don't like it at all. I don't think I actually mentioned on my channel that recently I actually had to travel down to Leeds because one of my family members passed away and so it was a really difficult time for obviously more reasons than one. Obviously it was a difficult time to lose somebody um, and it was also a very, very, very anxious, horrible time. So I am from Edinburgh and a lot of my family come from Leeds, which is um, a place down in England. We had to endure a four and a half hour drive, which was kind of, that's just what we had to do. If I wanted to go down there to the funeral, I had to go um, in a four and a half hour car journey and that was just, that's just the way it is. Sometimes that kind of thing just happens. Um, so I had to make the decision of whether I want to go or not. For a long time I was considering just not going because the travel would have just been way too much. Um, but in the end I decided I might as well go. I'm going to regret this so much if I don't go and so I went. I know what it's like to feel unbelievably anxious at the thought of travel. Um, but because I did that four and a half hour journey there and five hour journey back when I don't know where that other half hour came from. Um, I know some good tips and I know what helped me endure that journey and um, so I want to share some of these with you. I am very 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 anxious still with travel like I've said so these tips are really useful so like I know these tips do actually work these tips actually really did help me and um, so I hope that if you're having to go on a horrible journey soon and you're having to travel I hope some of these will help you out a little bit because they did help me. My first tip is, is you should make a playlist with lots and lots of songs that lasts your journey if that makes sense. So my journey was four and a half hours so make sure your playlist is at least four and a half hours long. My friend has a, a really good playlist on Spotify that I followed um, which is 16 hours long so like I knew that I was set for music and um, music just really helps me. I know that some people might find classical kind of relaxing music helpful but for me having really like shit music helps me like little mix like I need some really really bad music that is really catchy that I can sing along to um, and that I it's kind of upbeat and happy and that's kind of music that helps me and um, so I had a lot of shit music all the way down and it helped me quite a lot. Um, my next tip I had to use quite a lot because on the way down I was very anxious. I had a few panic attacks and um, when I was about an hour away from home I was like no I can't do this, turn back, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this. But I still managed to persevere but the thing that really really helped me when I was having a really anxious moment was putting my hand out the window. I know that sounds really weird but um, when I'm feeling really really anxious, obviously when you get really anxious you get really really unbelievably hot and it's a really strange heat that I just, it's just like all of a sudden I am absolutely roasting. So I just put the window down a little bit, put my hand out until I felt calmer and the breeze and the like reaction on my hand and I don't know, it just really really helped me. I don't know the science behind it, I don't know why it helped me but it really really did. Obviously it cooled me down but it made me feel calm as well. So that's really really, that's a tip I really want you to remember if you're having to travel soon because that really helped me. Of course, um, making sure you have your entertainment down, you know exactly what you have for entertainment. So download audiobooks. I downloaded the audiobook app and I got a free book. Um, you, everyone gets a free book when you sign up. And I also don't, I don't think it costs per month. I don't really know much about it. I just downloaded a book just in case I needed it. I didn't actually end up listening to it. But it's just nice to have backups. Um, Download movies if you can, so if you have iTunes or whatever, download lots of movies. I didn't actually end up using movies either, but just knowing before your trip that you have everything you possibly could need. I definitely think that the the pressure of the build up towards the travelling is a lot worse for me, so the actual travelling is horrific, I hate it, but the build up is so much worse because it's two weeks of sheer panic and illness before you travel and that I think for me that's the worst part so making sure you're 100% prepared making sure you're doing everything you possibly can in those two weeks to prepare yourself getting enough sleep and um, staying hydrated all those kinds of things that are just a given that you know you should be doing make sure you're doing them in the build-up towards your traveling 
Another thing that I did which I think really helped me was tracked my route. So I have an iPhone, so I used... Oh, God. Nearly fell. I have an iPhone, so I used um, just the maps that comes with my phone. And I typed in the location I'm going to. And the whole way, it, like, tells you where you're going. You can obviously mute it so it doesn't say, turn left every 60 seconds. But um, having that map um, and being able to, like make it smaller screen, you can see how much you've travelled so far. I just, that really helps me like keep my bearings and know what's happening, make me feel more in control. Um, I really liked being able to see, okay I've done two hours, I've got two and a half hours left. Uh, I just really really like that. Another thing that's helpful is if you, so for example I am travelling from Edinburgh to Leeds, Newcastle is the city that's in between. Um, Knowing exactly your route, knowing what places you'll be travelling through, so I knew I was tra travelling through Newcastle, I knew I was travelling through lots of different places, being able to keep track exactly like where you are, where you're going along, um, also I always kept, I always looked at the road signs, so when a road sign said 60 miles to this place, I would say okay if you're still feeling unwell in those 60 miles then we can get off and we can go and get coffee and we can go to the toilet blah blah blah. And also it's really good to keep track of road signs because you actually go a lot th quicker than you think. So seeing okay Newcastle 60 miles away and then suddenly it's 30 miles away and it was just 60 miles away two minutes ago. I don't know if I'm making much sense but keeping track of road signs helps you stay in control and know where you're going and I just felt like it really really helped me. Um, something to bear in mind is if you do have a panic attack it's absolutely fine. It, I had I think three panic attacks on my way down and I still managed to get there in one piece. Nothing bad happened. Um, I made a whole video on my metaphobia, my phobia of sick. So as you guys know I am very very scared of being sick and that was my main reason why I get panicky because I think I'm going to be sick when I wasn't sick. Nothing bad happened to me, nothing bad will happen to you. Um, there was no road collisions, I wasn't in any accidents, I wasn't ill, um, I got there in one piece, nothing bad happened when I was actually staying overnight there, nothing bad happened, um, I was absolutely fine and I was away for two nights, so three full days, nothing bad happened, I had about 10 hours of travelling uh, and I was absolutely fine and so you know, you will be absolutely fine, deep down you know, nothing bad is probably going to happen, but let's just prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Um, but if you do have a panic attack, it doesn't mean that you're going to keep having panic attacks, it doesn't mean anything bad's going to happen. I had a few panic attacks and I was absolutely fine, nothing bad happened to me. So if you do have a panic attack, don't panic, don't think that's your trip ruined. It just means you had a blip and two minutes later you will be fine. Something that helped me is I knew that I was going down for two nights. So I knew it was going to be like, at the very most, like... 50 hours or I don't know, I can't really remember how many hours I was there for. But if you just bear in mind, it's only a matter of time. It's only amount of hours. So even if you have the worst trip of your life, you will be back in your home in less than a few days. Do you know what I mean? So if you know how many hours you're going to be there for, I know that seems like you're calculating way too much and you're looking too much into it. But it really helps me to know that, okay, in 50 hours time, I'll be home. That is, the that is the worst it's going to get. Even if I have the worst trip of my life and I'm sick and everything bad possibly happens, in 50 hours I will be home. And that just really, really helps me. I'll be back to my own comfort. Everything will be fine. So bear in mind, it's only a matter of time before you're back. So just try your best to make the most of it. Um, making sure you're distracted is the biggest top tip I can possibly give you. Um, chatting with your friends and family in the car but not chatting about anxiety, chatting about the things that aren't interesting, chatting about politics, chatting about what you're going to be doing the week after, chatting about what you're going to have for tea, chatting about the new hotel, chatting about just this that, and the next thing really helps. Um, something else I found helpful in the lead up to going to Leeds was looking at my hotel. So I was the person that was like to my dad, we need to stay at this place, I'm not staying at that place because that place makes me feel anxious for no reason, there's no reason it makes me feel anxious, I just don't want to stay there, let's stay in this hotel, um, looking at all the pictures of the room, looking at the reviews, looking at this, that and the next thing, um, looking at the church we were going to, looking at the restaurants we could go to, the pubs we could go to, if you google maps everything, you know what everything looks like, it makes you have a clear image in your head of what everything's going to be like and when you actually get there you'll be like, oh, I remember this place from google maps. I know how to get to the room, or I know the receptionist's name, like all these silly things, um, Google Maps and places before you go really, really helps. I think that's all of my travel anxiety tips um, for today, there are plenty, plenty more, so keep looking around on YouTube, keep looking around on uh, 
Google, there's lots and lots of travel anxiety tips. And a lot of people that are like us, a lot of people struggle with travel. There are a lot of people with anxiety that traveling is their least favorite part and is their most difficult part. So try and take some of these tips into consideration. Try and uh, use some of these tips. They c could be really, really helpful for you and could make your trip actually a really good trip. You never know, you might actually have a good time. So who knows, who knows? I know that's probably not what you're thinking about. You don't even care if you have a good time. You're just worried about getting there. You will get there though. Um, I hope this video helped you and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.